Host Nora McInerney is back for season two of The Head Start, Embracing the Journey, a podcast from Ruby Studio and Abvi. In each episode, Nora has real conversations with real people living with chronic migraine to see how they took action to understand this disease. So jump into the conversation for season two, a show that creates a little more space for empathy and understanding in such a complicated world. There shouldn't be so much hesitation around asking questions and asking for help. So don't wait. Join the Head Start Embracing the Journey and learn a little more about life with chronic migraine. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids to a classroom? Homes.com knows that these are all the things that you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. Summer is upon us, and whatever you have going on, a vacation, a staycation, a summer wedding, well, Macy's has you covered. If you need summer dresses, matching sets, volume sleeve tops, wedges, straw-crafted bags, I mean, really, they have what you need head to toe. I'm talking Levi's, Dolce Vita, Lacoste, and more. So shop summer must-haves at Macy's. Go to Macy's.com slash own your style. Again, that's Macy's.com slash own your style. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to The Fifth Thing. I'm Amy. And I'm Kat. And our quote today is from Audrey Hepburn. Ooh. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says I'm possible. Ah. <laughs> That's good. great. I wonder if she really said that. Well, I guess at some point she did. <laughs> Honestly. <Yeah. laughs> or somebody just put that on Instagram. Yeah. And then last Thursday, my sister was on the podcast with her husband, Ben, because we were recapping the Building Roots episode that I was on. And we were talking about other things like Dolly, pardon Jesus, my dad. My sister talked about how to make your home feel like a welcoming hug. So just little tips for that, especially because the season's changing and you may want to like warm things up a little bit. But my sister gave me this statement that she wrote for herself that she's saying every single day. So I was going to share it with you, Kat, because Kat's been in Mexico living her best life. I haven't got to listen to that or I haven't watched your episode yet either. Well, you can stream it on Max. Okay, great. So this is my sister's statement that she created, and I love it. And I want to share it again with you, Kat, and other listeners in case they didn't hear that episode. But it is, I am now fully aware of my agency to create a life of purposeful intention and profound meaning. Hmm. What did she come up with that on her own? Yeah, she's been working through a lot of stuff, and she realized just how much she sits back and just lets life happen because mm. she doesn't want to, I guess, take the agency over her life and create what she wants and knowing that she doesn't have to fall into other people's, I guess, traps boxes? For, for lack of a better word. Yeah, boxes, but it, it ultimately then feels like a trap for her Yeah, because she, she doesn't feel like she can really be herself or who she wants to be or she just wants to please everybody and not ruffle feathers and not that this statement means now she's going to like come out of the box and start causing all kinds of not at all it's just that I'm not going to let what what other people think of me affect me and who I want to show up as so sort of just to shut off some of those thoughts of like yeah they're not in control of my life I am in control of my life yeah and if I don't pay attention to that I can give them the control and I don't want to do that Exactly. I like that. Yeah. Which speaking of my sister, we did get an email from someone asking about the shirt she was wearing during the Building Roots episode that I'm on. So I'll read it real quick. It's from Taylor in Virginia Beach. Hey, Amy, I love your sister's show, Building Roots, and I especially loved your episode tonight. Your room couldn't have been more perfect. I love it so much. This is a silly question, but I really loved all of your sister's button down tops and blouses that she wore on the show. Can you ask her where she got them from? Thanks, your friend Taylor from Virginia Beach, which Taylor, no question is a silly question. I copied that, texted it over to my sister, and she replied back, free people. 
So no way. Yeah. Wait. Okay. That's so funny because I haven't watched the episode, but I watched the clips that you guys were putting up, and I literally had the thought where it was. There was a white shirt she had on, and I thought to myself, I need that shirt for work. So now I know. Well, it's free people and. Stashira, my daughter, she's 16 and she's been liking a lot of things from free people lately, but that price point doesn't make much sense for a 16 year old. So we've also been Googling affordable shops, stores, online retailers, whatever, similar to free people. Like even in Amazon, you can pull up certain things that have the free people vibe and the price point is just going to be better. So that's just a tip for if Mm -hmm. free people isn't in your budget, but that's what my sister was mostly wearing. And when my sister finds something she likes, she kind of will get multiple colors. You can also find free people stuff on sale if you look hard enough. Like at the end of the season, I found so many free people shirts because I love free, po- free people. So, or at the end of the summer, actually, for like 60% off if you like to dig for things. Oh. It'll be at like Rack. Have you ever like free people's always at um, Nordstrom Rack? Yes, like in Nashville, Brentwood area, yeah. Rack is right next to Home Goods, and it's always a nice little outing. <laughs> it's also, you have to go by yourself. Oh, see, I go with kids a lot, and that is quite the adventure. Yeah. Because it's also by Chick-fil-A, so it's, uh, it's definitely a full-blown outing. Although my kids are, I think, the only kids in America that don't love, love, love Chick-fil-A. Like, they'll eat it, but they're not obsessed with it. I am. But they're oh not. Gosh. What's their fast food go to? Sonic, Chipotle, and like Jimmy John's. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which speaking of food, do you have any foods you're obsessed with lately? Because I'm having interesting cravings right now. Not for any particular reason, obviously. Are you still eating burgers every day? <laughs> yeah, I did get a burger at True Food Kitchen. If y'all ever come to Nashville or there's some like in Austin, there's one in Austin and there's some in California. I don't know where all true foods exist, but I love our one in Nashville and I got a burger with an egg on it. Now I'm obsessed with burgers that have an egg on it. Ugh. Why are you making that face? I can't eat eggs. I can't eat anything with an egg that I can see in it. Like if it's in a in cake, I can eat an egg, but I can cannot eat eggs. Well, like you got Chinese food last night. Y'all don't get fried rice with egg? I pick the egg out. Oh. <laughs> Okay. And like, I can't even be in the kitchen when the egg is being cooked. I wish I liked it. Wow. I just boiled like eight hard boiled eggs for my kids to eat during the week. And Kat and I are doing this on Zoom today because of our schedules. And when she first popped up on the Zoom, I was downstairs doing my boiled egg situation where you transfer it from the pot to the ice. And Kat was like, I have no idea what you're doing. That's like, you've never boiled an egg, made it hard boiled. Never boiled an egg. For somebody I dated a while, a long time ago, I used to make him scrambled eggs. And I realized that that was a low point in my life that I like allowed him to make me make him eggs. Patrick would never let me. Because he knows, he knows. I think it's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. I will say, I'm not saying it's disgusting for people to eat them. I just can't. I've tried. I've tried all the tricks, but it's like my mo- there's something in my brain won't let me enjoy it. Well, something I am craving and eating a lot of lately is mac and cheese, just like straight up craft or the Annie's brand. Depending on what store I'm at, they may not have craft, but they have the Annie's. And mac and cheese is something is, that is on heavy rotation. It's so good to me right now. And I don't know why, because I probably went a very long time not eating any kind of boxed mac and cheese. Yeah. Probably at Thanksgiving, I have my family's Alabama mac and cheese yo recipe or Christmas time. We make that But it's not like any time during the year, I'm like, oh, got to have my Kraft mac and cheese. I was thinking, why why box mac and cheese? Or also the microwavable cups where you fill it up to the line and microwave it for two and a half minutes and then add the powdered cheese and mix it up and voila. (laughs) I've I've been doing that. So that's something that's new for me that's just so good. And a concoction. Because, you know, I'm trying to get more of my whey protein in, but I don't always want a smoothie as the weather's changing. I'm like, ugh, smoothie doesn't seem as appealing as a hot summer day. Are you putting your protein powder in your mac and cheese powder? No, but that's not a bad idea. No. Oh, please don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> if it was didn't have flavor. No, I'm not going to do that. But okay, so I got these Ziggy's yogurt. Have you ever had those? I don't know. It's something so creamy about it. And I'm trying to have more of those live cultures. Those have live yeah. active whatever in there. It doesn't have to be the Ziggy's brand, but that's what I've been getting. And then I mix vanilla, grass-fed whey, whatever protein in with the yogurt. And then I mix in granola mm. and I've been eating that and it's so good. That can be good. I was going to say, I'm going to sound so picky. I don't like mac and cheese. Okay. What do you like? Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I will eat mac and cheese if it's like the homemade kind, or it could be at a restaurant when the cheese is like hard on the top, but I don't like the creamy cheese. Okay. Uh, you don't like uh, a powdered cheese? I don't like, I'm I, okay. I could eat that, but I would never choose it. If, okay. if it was like the only thing that we had, I would eat it, but I would never say I want that. And if we were at a restaurant, I would never ask for it. Well, yeah, I mean, but never say never because now I'm craving it all the time. And I did You're say right. like uh, not craving for any particular reason because we do have a pregnancy question coming up next. Well, a pregnancy announcement question because I'm definitely not pregnant. But I feel like when you say you're craving, you have, yeah. you're having weird cravings, which not that that's that bizarre, but for me, <laughs> and then I'm just suggesting to check it out because I don't know, it's been very satisfying to me lately. What what about you, Kat? What are you eating lately? So I've been on a kick with dumplings, like little Asian, like steamed dumplings. Do you like those? I do. And I have this meal that I've been making like twice a week and it's all from Trader Joe's. So if you have a Trader Joe's, you can make this really easily. They have this like Thai bagged salad. So I put that in there and then I make their cauliflower fried rice, which you can make in like five seconds. I put that in the bowl. Then I make some broccoli and then I steam the dumplings and put them on top. And it is so good. And everything takes minimum five minutes to make. And it feels like you homemade a meal. Well, I was going to say your meal sounds much more sophisticated than anything I suggested. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all like pre-made stuff. So I don't do any actual cooking. Uh, another email that we got is from Suzanne in Massachusetts. And she was asking where I get my news from because she's heard me mention him before. But she was like, is it Moshe? Like M-O-S-H-E? She said she's looking for an impartial news source. And it is Moshe, but it is spelled M O S. H E H. So that's the handle, M O S H E H, and it's Mo News, sort of like a play on More News, Mo, Mo, Mo News. Wait, I never picked that up. <laughs> I, I think it is. At least that's how it probably I'm, is. It makes sense now. I've taken it, and he's just so great at breaking down news. He's been an executive producer at CBS News, Fox News, Bloomberg. So he's very qualified, knows what he's doing, and he's just sort of ventured out and doing his own thing through Instagram, and he has a newsletter. So definitely check him out for impartial news. All right, you got to love a place that makes shopping for gifts super easy because heads up, Father's Day is June 16th, and Macy's has got you covered. Their ultimate gift guide makes shopping for the dad or the dad figure in your life super easy. You can shop by price, 25 and under, 50 and under, 100 and lux. You can shop by category, like cologne, watches, leather goods. You can even shop by gift lists. Like if your dad loves to grill, then shop for grill master things. If your dad loves to golf, then you can go to the gift list that is for the golfer. I mean, really, Macy's has thought of it all. If you have a tech-savvy dad, voila, Macy's Gift Finder, again, has you covered with that. Top gifts include Beats headphones, JBL portable speakers, Nintendo Switch, and more. Top brands such as Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, Polo Ralph Lauren, Columbia, and more. Really, Macy's has it all, so don't be a last-minute shopper. Father's Day is June 16th. Make sure to check out Macy's.com slash gift finder to find a unique gift they'll love. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Something that I've learned in therapy is that goals are really important. Like, it can really help you out. Like, when life is going so fast, it's important to take a moment to celebrate how far you've come, celebrate those wins, but also look forward to where you're going. Make adjustments for the rest of the year. And therapy can help you take stock of your progress and set achievable goals for the next three months, the next six months. 
I have personally benefited from therapy in so many ways. I feel like we'd be here all day if I were to tell you all of the ways therapy has helped me out, giving me tools to have in my back pocket for when we need to bust them out, coping skills, how to set boundaries. I feel so much more empowered uh, because of therapy. So I'm very thankful for it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, well, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Take a moment, visit betterhelp.com slash four things today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash four things. Again, you're going to get 10% off your first month. From searching online to asking your friends and family, there are a lot of ways to look for jobs. But have you considered finding your next job through a staffing company? Your local Express Employment Professionals team is your one connection to endless job opportunities. With just one application, they can help you find a job at a company that fits your needs. Visit ExpressPros.com. And as always, Express never charges job seekers a fee. Express knows when companies are hiring, offers benefits and competitive pay. And in just one interview, they are prepared to present you to multiple companies who fit your needs. Express Employment Professionals places people in all kinds of jobs, including everything from customer service to warehouse jobs to accounting and IT roles. Let Express help you. And remember, there is never a fee for job seekers. Go to expresspros.com to get started and discover for yourself what it's like to have support in your job search. You can also start through the Express Jobs app. Download it today to search jobs, apply, and contact your local Express office. Now, the other email that we got, I'm going to leave the name anonymous just because it's an announcement and she's asking how to ask something. But she said, my husband and I got exciting news that we're pregnant. We've been struggling for a year dealing with my PCOS along with cyst and hormone issues to get pregnant. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law have been trying for almost two years with failed IVFs and other hormone therapy. How do we share our exciting news without rubbing it into them? Amy, could you share about your experience of people around you getting pregnant? And Kat, could you share your therapist side? Thanks for any help. Your friend. Uh, and then she signed something, but I'm going to leave it at that. And I think on my end, I had plenty of people around me getting pregnant when I was trying to get pregnant. I mean, and my very own sister has had four kids. So I never took it as anything personal. I was still very excited for them. It was more me and almost like my own private conversations with God, sort of just being confused and trying to figure that out and and not really with the person. But I think the best thing you can do is just tell them as quickly as possible. Tell them when you would tell them, even if they weren't going through that, because if you put it off, that's awkward. You can choose to tell them privately since they may receive it a little bit different. You don't have to make it this, but, but also don't make them feel left out if you are doing some big announcement, but maybe you could give them a heads up before. And then I think it's okay to be aware of that and give some, some space if they need it. And then I don't know what their reaction would be. Again, I never had any kind of, we'll call it an outburst. Cause I think that that probably could happen mm -hmm. just because depending on how emotional you are, if you are going through IVF treatments, if you are having hormones and different things, you may have some sort of a, we'll call it an outburst for lack of a better word, because someone may not really want to respond that way, but they just do. And they probably likely will regret it. I never had that, but if they do, I just wouldn't take that reaction personally at all. And another thing I would say is even though you've been through some of this too, that's why y'all are so excited to finally get pregnant. I wouldn't try to be like, hey, I totally understand. I've been in your shoes. I know what this is like. I just don't ever feel like that's ever <laughs> helpful, even helpful. if you have been there. And so I guess the last thing I would say is you should be excited and you have every right to be excited. So don't in any way, shape or form apologize for being pregnant because you mm. feel bad to them yeah. or being like, I'm sorry that this happened to me and it's not happening for you or something like that. I really like everything you said, especially the last thing and then saying that you understand what it feels like because you're right. We might have an idea of what they might be feeling, but we don't really know. And that sometimes can feel patronizing a little bit. The only thing I would add is I don't know what their relationship is, how close they are. But I would treat this announcement as I would that relationship. If I am really close with my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law, then 
I would assume those people would also want to be in the news of my life and be in the celebrations of my life, just like I would want to be for them. If I'm not very close with them, I might treat it differently. And that's why there's not like a blanket answer for this. But a good thing to remember is you can have so many emotions at the same time. So they can be really, 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 really excited for you, even if it hurts a little bit. And just because it hurts a little bit, it doesn't mean that they don't want to celebrate you. Yeah. And I would say too, this is, this email is about pregnancy, but this could be if, you know, anything you have friends that all they want in life is to get married and they haven't met anybody or they're not engaged yet or whatever. And then suddenly you get engaged and you have to go tell that friend or certain friends, you know, this is something that could fall into that as well. Or you got your dream job and someone's waiting to get their Mm -hmm. dream job or they're at a job that they hate every day and they're waiting for the right thing to come along. When you just said that about the getting engaged, I had that happen over and over and over and over in my life where my friends were either in relationships or they're getting married or they're having babies and moving on. And I would feel sad that I didn't have that, but I never was sad that my friends did. And I was always so grateful to be included in all of those announcements and those celebrations. So I might feel differently because like we said, nobody's going to react the same way. But what I always knew is that it's my job to process my feelings about what is happening in my life versus my friends. I don't want them to dull their lives down or not talk to me about things just because I might be struggling with something because that's my job. And I can actually handle that and take care of that myself. I also didn't want to be babied. But that, again, is my experience. That might not be the experience of everybody. Which this weekend we're having like a wedding shower of sorts for you. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fun. Do you it's know my the, first one. Do, do you know the theme or is this a surprise? It's a stock the bar party. Isn't okay, it? you know. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that weird? Like you never know if something's a surprise or not, but we've known about this the whole time. I yeah. know. I just want to err on the side of caution because in the moment. <laughs> I'm like, I, wait, I'm having a party? Yes. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> that would be so good if you live like ruined the surprise for me. <laughs> and I'd be like Just kidding. I don't know what I'm talking about. (laughs) We're not having a stock the bar party this weekend for you, Kat. I just totally said that (laughs) for fun. I'm just joking. But I do think a stock the bar party is such a good idea for if, you know, obviously the couple, they consume alcohol in a healthy way. (laughs) That makes the most sense. But we've decided to make it a whole like bar type theme. Like if you're out at the bar. So it's going to be fun. I'm excited about it. Can't wait to celebrate you and Big P. And Kat, I think we'll wrap with what is EMDR because I got an email about that. And I know that you do brain spotting. You're trained in that. I have done one session of EMDR. It really wasn't for me. I've done a couple of sessions of brain spotting, which I really loved. Well, listen, let me back it up. I don't think who I went to or whatever was going on with me the day that I went, it wasn't ideal for me. I still would like to go try it again. And then I've done neurofeedback. But can you break down exactly what EMDR is and then also brain spotting? Because there's been a few questions about that lately. So I thought we'd just take care of it here. Yeah. And that's actually a good topic for me to cover on You Need Therapy one day because I don't think I've done that. But both of those things, EMDR and brain spotting, are both trauma- therapies. They're modalities that therapists will be trained in and then used to help people reprocess their trauma. They are two of the most researched modalities. That's why they're so popular because a lot of therapies can't be researched because they're so different and they're they're not always regimented. EMDR uses something called bilateral stimulation. So if you are doing it, you might be moving your eyes across a screen following like a light. You might have beepers in your hand. You might be moving your legs. And in a very, very simple way to explain it, it uses that bilateral stimulation to reprocess and desensitize the traumatic event in your brain and in your body. So the point of it is to take a memory or an experience that is a high level triggering experience. And by the end of the sessions, however many you do, it will be lowered. 
I don't know what the scale is going to be for each person, but the goal is to lower that. I did EMDR as a client. I didn't like it and I never got trained in it because it's very regimented and there's very, very specific protocols. And that's just not me as a person. I don't like following certain directions. I like to be able to talk and go off on tangents and stuff like that. And that's how I am as a therapist as well. Brain spotting is the same kind of idea, but it uses one specific brain spot or one spot you'll look at. And you'll either use a, something on the wall, a pointer that you'll stare at, and you will essentially open up like a, a capsule in your brain and you'll kind of just let the experiences, the memories come out and you process that freely. The therapist does very, very little anything. They will guide you and they'll might encourage you to stay on a certain thing, but you can start talking about your mom and you can end up talking about literally anything from any part of your life. And it kind of opens up these old, like I said, capsules that have been locked in your brain that are are keeping you stuck somehow. I did brain spotting a couple of different ways over a three-day period. It was when I went away to Virginia with yeah. Linda, a stranger that picked me up from the airport because <laughs> I was going to lose my mind. But I escaped to Virginia, locked in a hotel room for three days, like nine hours a day we were working. And some of the brain spotting was me actually drawing on butcher paper. I drew my mom. Another one, I drew my dad. Another one, I drew Ben. And then we worked through some things to describe my relationship with them. And then we would put it on the wall and I would like talk to it. And then to it, the drawing, talk to my mom or talk to my dad as if they were right there. And I'm looking at all these things and these memories and experiences that I have with them. And then she also had these cards that she used that, I don't know, they had animals on it. And I, she would flip through them and I would pause if something resonated with me. And there was an eagle. All I know is I landed on an eagle, like going into the sun. And it was very interesting. She also had one of those, like a, it looked like an antenna like a pointer yeah, thing. Yeah, like a, I call it a wand, but a wand. it's a pointer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so it can look a, a lot of different ways. Again, I'm not trained in EMDR, so I can't speak to the fullness of it. But from my experience, there's a lot more opportunity and ways to cater brain spotting to what the client needs versus EMDR has much more, there's more like rules in my experience to it. Yeah, so just I would work with your therapist, those of you that have asked, or if you have someone and I would ask around and you never know in your, wherever you live in your town, there might be someone that's really good at X, Y, Z or ask your friends. I mean, hopefully you have a safe environment with people that you could talk about if, you know, you're looking into getting some of this additional type of therapy. Well, that concludes our chat for today. I feel like we talked about everything from food to free people to freeing your mind. (laughs) Ooh, food, free people, and free in your mind. That's going to be the title. Oh, I don't know yet. We'll see. TBD. <laughs> uh, gosh, people don't realize sometimes how much thought we put into titles, and we're probably overthinking it too much. Like, mm-hmm. But I'm curious how much you, as our listeners, it, how much you rely on the title. Like, are you going to listen no matter what? Or sometimes do you see the title and you think, oh, yeah, I want to listen to this. Or do you see it and you're like, eh, probably not for me, and you skip it. That would be interesting for y'all to share your feedback. Yeah. Send me an email. Send us a note. Four things with Amy Brown at gmail.com. Kat, where can people find you? On Instagram at, at cat.defada and at uni therapy podcast. And I am at Radio Amy. You can also hit up radioamy.com for different links. If you're looking to get into gratitude and you want to check out one of our four things gratitude journals. of the proceeds go to Haiti, education in Haiti through Project MetaShare. And you can just hit up fourthings.com for that. And Kat and I both hope that you're having the day that you need to have. Bye. Bye. All right. This sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting banana boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. 
from sweat resistant sport formula to kids SPF 50 plus. This is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. This is Malcolm Gladwell from Revisionist History. eBay Motors is here for the ride. With some elbow grease, fresh installs, and a whole lot of love, you transformed 100,000 miles and a body full of rust into a drive that's all your own. Brake kits, LED headlights, whatever you need, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. This is it. We've got an Amex Platinum Pro on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't seen anyone relax like this before in the Centurion Lounge. Is he connecting to complimentary Wi-Fi? Oh, my! Look at that! He is! And you will not believe where he's going next. The Amex dedicated card member entrance for the win! Unbelievable! When you get travel perks with Amex Platinum, you're part of the action. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash with Amex.